Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm continuing my discussions of what is happening in the Arctic, uh, focusing on the Arctic sea ice. I'll also talk briefly about what's happening in Antarctica. And uh, this image that I showed you um, at the beginning of my video, my screen just went off. Sorry, technical issues. Okay, this is showing Northern Hemisphere snow extent. So in the US, and this is in millions of square kilometers. Okay, um, so lots of snow in the winter, dropping off in the summer, and then, uh, you know, reforming in the winter. This is uh, Asia here, much larger numbers here, much larger coverage, and this is in Europe. So what you basically, the loss of snow cover on, um, in the US, Asia, and Europe, um, means that it, the land is getting a lot darker earlier, especially it's snow cover in the spring months, May and June, most specifically in June, has dropped significantly in the last number of years. So what that means is that the, um, so the albedo, the Arctic is darkening significantly. We always talk about Arctic sea ice decline resulting in the darkening because the sea ice is replaced by the dark ocean, uh, which absorbs tremendous amounts of energy as compared to reflecting it from the white surfaces. But the decline of snow cover, most specifically, you know, in June, um, exceeds the, uh, it, it exposes more and more, more of the dark land area underneath so the albedo, the effect on albedo is almost double that of the, the sea ice if we're talking about the, the, the June month. So the loss of uh, snow cover in um, the spring in June is about 22% per, per decade, whereas the loss of Arctic sea ice uh, in, in uh, September is about 12.7% per decade. So we, we can't forget about the snow extent component in making the Arctic darker, okay? Um, this graph is from the cryosphere computing site. Okay, so if we go back to Arctic sea ice graphs, okay, and scroll down, um, there's a number of graphs that have been put on recently can't find them now. Here we go. Um, albedo warming potential over the entire Arctic, the high Arctic albedo warming potential, and the regional albedo warming potential, and then accumulated values of all of these things. So what we can see is 2019 is here. So the unit is um, clear, clear sky, um, energy absorption anomaly and it's in megajoules per square per square meter okay so it's the amount of energy that absorb is absorbed in the arctic basically so the cumulative number here 2019 shows you that we're clearly above any other year the green was the 2016 2012 was here this curve here so the amount of energy absorbed in the Arctic, causing melting of sea ice and snow cover because of the darkening surface is larger this year than any previous year. And that's whether you take the entire Arctic region or just the high Arctic region. Okay, uh, same sort of thing here in the high Arctic region, although, you know, 2012 is this other curve. Um, so it's having, you know, if you compare the 2012 curve over the whole Arctic to just the high Arctic, clearly, you know, the, um, the loss of albedo in the, in the high Arctic dropped a lot faster, um, changed a lot faster than causing a lot more absorption of energy um, than any other year, but we have beat it out this year here. Um, there is fluctuation um, from month to month. Okay, there's some months, uh, you know, one year is winning, other, so it's like a horse race. This is uh, 2016, 
2019 here and here, and then the, this curve here is 2012, the previous, the record minimum year. Okay, so the cumulative effects, and here we have the different regions. Um, you know, it's divided by regions. So the albedo in the different regions, and that depends on the regional uh, sea ice change. So very good information um, that is fair, that has been added fairly recently to the Arctic sea ice uh, graphs uh, page. Now this is an it, this is a, a view of sea ice average thickness. So I'm going to talk about that. So if you click on that, then you basically get this site. Um, Arc, this is basically translation Arctic penguin, which is an anomaly because we know penguins are in Antarctica, not Antarctic. So if you click on view, you can look at all of these different images, okay, which I'm going to sh talk about and show, so, show you some of these now. Okay, so this is the Arctic sea ice average thickness. So what you can see is, you know, as the winter proceeds from, you know, the, here's the fall, you know, we reach a minimum thickness in, first of all, in November. You know, the sea ice starts, reaches a minimum extent in September, um, but the, the uh, thickness of the ice is still decreasing until about November. And the reason is that the water has been warmed all around the sea ice. And that warm water goes underneath the ice, so this is all bottom melt. Okay, the ice is starting to thicken, and or the, the ice is starting to um, reform on the edges, you know, after the minimum extent is reached in, in uh, September, uh, mid-September, about here, or end of September, about here. September 21st last year, generally September 15th. So the ice is still um, getting thinner and thinner up until November because the warm water underneath is melting it from below. So this is all... Lo ice loss from from below it reaches the the minimum thickness here and then it starts to grow um, throughout the winter it slowly grows up and then what happens is um, you know then it starts to it reaches a maximum here and then it starts to melt off um, and get thinner and thinner here but then what happens here is uh, you know we get a lot of loss in extent and area so when you talk about the average of thickness, it's of the ice that's left. So all of the thinner ice basically on the edges melts out and that just leaves the thicker ice towards the center, which is why you get this sort of, you know, signal here. Um, so it's very interesting, you know, and clearly, you know, 2019, we're generally pushing the bottom of, of these envelopes of curves, you know, as the ice continues to, 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 go, to decrease. This is the Arctic sea ice melt. Um, um, this is the, uh, the, the, ex the total extent of the sea ice, and it's, it's, it's how it's declining. So this curve is very familiar to lots of people. And this is the, the melt rate, if you like, the melting of the ice. You know, how much extent is melted out, and clearly the melt happens in the summer months. Okay, uh, this is Antarctica now, and this is the regional Antarctic sea ice extent. So remember, that's that's um, you know, 15% could be ice, 85% could be water, um, and that's considered in the total. Okay, um, so what you can see is you can see the overall Arctic, and 2019 is the black line. You can see the overall sort of Antarctic rather. And then you can see the different sectors, the Weddell Sea sector, the Indian Ocean, the Ross Sea, West Pacific Ocean, and Bellingshausen and Amundsen Sea. So you can look at all, all the data is there, have a look at it yourself by going on to the, these sites as I've shown you how to do. Um, this is the same sort of thing, but it's the Antarctic sea ice area instead. So here we are with the black curve. You can see you know, there is regional fluctuation. So the sea ice area is higher in the Weddell Sea, it's lower in the Indian Ocean, right? You can compare it to the um, other years in each of these different sectors. Um, this is the same sort of thing for the Arctic. This is the sea ice area in the Arctic um, in all of the different basins. 2019 is the black line. 
um, and you can see the overall Arctic Basin, that's the central Arctic Basin, the Barents Sea, um, Greenland Sea, all of these different areas. Um, one thing you can notice is in the Chukchi Sea, basically we're getting ice out a lot quicker than we used to. Okay, it's dropping below all of the other curves. Uh, you know, a lot of these regions, it's hugging the bottom of the curve, of, of the envelope of curves of all the years. Okay, so um, you can see how there is regional fluctuation and compared to other years. This is the global sea ice extent. Um, you know, how you, you get, the, so globally, this is Arctic plus Antarctic. So you can see how the variation goes from year to year. Um, and you can see that there is a decline here as well. The anomaly is actually dropping underneath the line here. The, you know, this is the zero line. You can see the fluctuation above and below. But now we're generally, you know, we're losing global sea ice overall, you know, according to this trend. This is a normalized anomaly um, of sea ice concentration. Um, normalized global sea ice extent anomaly, actually. So you can see the fluctuation here, and there's a general trend going downwards here. This is the, um, this is the sea ice extent. You know, here we are in 2019, you know, record lows. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what happens um, in the, in the, in the uh, October, November months, because we had, this was 2016, you know, really dropped off, didn't climb much. This is uh, uh, 2018, there's a 2016 in here. So recent years, we've had much less global sea ice extent. This is the anomaly curves of the global sea ice area. Uh, normal, another curve. Okay, so there's loads and loads of data. This is the sea ice area. Um, this is Antarctic sea ice extent. Uh, you know, here we are in 2017. Um, this does, we don't have um, more 2018, 2019 data here. Uh, 2017, you can see the drop. You can just focus in on things. This is the Ar Arctic sea ice volume. Um, showing you how the volume is. So, so it's maximized here. The ice is growing in the winter. It's still um, growing. We start getting the surface melt, causing a decrease. You know, we get a large decline in the volume here. We reach the minimum here, and then we start to rise. That's as opposed to the thickness, you know, which reached a minimum in November, right? So there's different dynamics going on and uh, you know, more sea ice melt and so on. Okay, so basically, I'll show you a couple things from Arctic sea ice. If you click on, if you go to Arctic sea ice graphs and you click on the blog and the forum, there's loads of great information there. So this is the blog and there's a thread comparing Arctic sea ice loss in 2019 this year versus in 2012. Okay, you can see lots of uh, stuff there. Um, and this is a this is um, a recent plot, a Bremen plot of the extent. This is the topic is the 2019 melt, melting season. Now, if you go, click on it, it goes. Uh, you want to go on the very latest entries here at the end. So click on. I clicked on 95. This is what I got, and you get all kinds of information about what's going on. Now, one of the things is that there is day-to-day -day fluctuation in those Bremen plots. So there is, so this is 2012 um, and this is uh, 2019 and, and depending on whether you take a, a one day curve or an average, you get different results. So you need to take an average and what you can see is that this year seems to be worse than um, in, in 2012. Um, this is a loss of ice in 100 uh, in a this is a thousand square kilometers. So we lost 201,000 square kilometers here. You can see that there's day-to-day -day variation here. Um, when will the ice disappear? Um, you know, it, many people are, are guessing here. We just don't know. And uh, yeah, anyway, so thank you for listening. Again, these are my go-to graphs, this one here and this one here. Thanks for listening.